Hello everybody, my name is Ira Bowman and I am the founder of Project Help You Grow. And today I wanna to help you guys with an issue um, that I'm hearing about over and over again. It's this, uh, this need to revise your resume um, with each and every job application that you submit. And the reason why you need to revise it, uh, it, 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 well, there's several reasons. I'm going to go into it, but I'm I'm hearing that hey, I shouldn't have to revise it. Uh, I'm I'm eligible. I qualify for this position. They should be able to read my resume and put it all together and all those things. And I understand. I think the main thing that people misunderstand is that um, the influx or the addition of competition has uh, increased greatly with the communication advances in you know internet and and these job boards and linkedin and all the different things that people use to advertise their jobs there is an influx or there's a lot more if you will people that are applying for every single position so what happens is uh, these hr folks the hr manager um, the hiring manager the recruiter whoever it is that's posting the job uh, is getting inundated with a ton of resumes. And frankly, a lot of people are qualified. So how is it that they determine who they're gonna interview and who they're not gonna interview? Because you know, if there's thousands of people who are applying for this job, obviously you're not gonna have time to read every resume and to interview everybody. So there's gotta be this, this method, if you will, of, of sorting them out, the ATS screen, the, Artificial intelligence is one of the, the mechanisms that a lot of people are starting to use. But even if they're not using artificial intelligence, even if they there is a person physically looking at the resume, they're going to do usually a quick screen, a glance over, and try to identify the people that are most qualified. They're going to be looking for keywords and terms and things like that. So I'm going to go into it now, if you don't mind, in a real world example. So what I've done, I am not a job seeker. But I've looked for a job on my own website, projecthealthygrow.com, that uh, I would be qualified for. So this is a position by Lexmark. I have several of them listed on the website. And uh, they're looking for somebody in Northern California or Texas. And I actually moved here from Texas, but I live in Northern California now. And I read through the job description and I do have my four-year degree. I've been doing this for more than five years. I've been in uh, business to business print sales for more than five years. So I'm qualified there, a self starter, highly motivated to succeed. I certainly feel like I fit that proven um, track record. I do have that. So I have these, these things in spades. However, if I was just to submit my, uh, my resume as is, in fact, uh, to be transparent, I did the same video yesterday with my a pre-existing resume, thinking that it was ATS compliance, and I was reached out by one of my friends who said, Ira, I can't recommend that video because your resume is not up to date. Well, it's good in a sense because I'm not a job seeker. However, uh, with their help, and there was actually several rounds of revisions, that they, they helped me bring it up to date. So if you, if you are using a resume that hasn't been touched in a while, you probably want to get somebody to help you update it to make it uh, ATS compliant. Now, from what I understand, my resume now is ATS compliant, which is good. So I've got um, a list here of my core, uh, or this is a professional summary, and then core competencies. And this is new. I didn't have any of this stuff on uh, before. And then I've got my employment history. Notice there's no vertical lines. That was one of the major faux pas that I had made is I had uh, the cities underlined and things like that. And then I had a bunch of dashes and symbols anyways. I cleaned it up. So this was all based on the advice of a good friend of mine, Christy uh, Bonner is the one who helped me. But anyways, uh, so what I would need to do, the revisions that we're talking about in these, uh, in these resume rewrites is not an overall like, start from scratch we're not talking about revisionist history changing things so that uh you know you're making it up to, to look like you're, you're, you have skills that you don't have it, it's all up and up what we're talking about in a lot of cases is um maybe some of these keywords that you're using and some of the descriptive words that you're using for your job so for example uh well now i have the word hunter and farmer in my professional summary here um, because I'm actually good at both but yesterday when I did this I didn't have that so uh, sometimes 
they're looking for specific things, they'll call it out. So for example, if I come here and I look through this, I'm just looking for something. Okay, so here's something, for example, I don't have this phrase, complex proposal response. Now, to increase my score, they probably have this as something that they're looking for, to increase my, my score from the scan. I could come in here and I could edit something like, right, right here I have responding to RFQ. I could add referring, re responding to RFQ and complex, just use their phrase, right? Complex proposal response. I can add that right there. And now that increases my likelihood or my, my, my ranking score. It increases my likelihood of getting the interview. I didn't have to rewrite my resume. It probably would take you know, 15 to 30 minutes um, per, per job submission, but that's okay because it's a targeted effort now and I have a really good shot of getting, I'm qualified for this job. If I was looking for a job, I, I probably would apply for this job because I, I think I could get it, right? But if I edit my resume and I add these keywords in here based on what they're looking for, I'm going to increase the opportunity to be interviewed. Now, there's three parts of the resume life, right? There's the initial job submission review. So when I submit it, somebody is going to review it, whether it's uh, artificial intelligence or, or a human being. Somebody's going to look at it quickly, like for six seconds if it's a human being and go, yes, this is somebody who's qualified. Let me, let me put them in the to be considered stack. And then there's the, the resumes that they're gonna look at and go, you know, they, they just don't have enough of what we're looking for, so we're not gonna consider interviewing them. And it'll go in that stack. It's not that they're, you know, making judgments that you're bad people or that you couldn't do a good job. It's just they, they feel that they have more qualified people in this particular case, right? If they're only to get one resume submission, they're going to take a really good look at that person and probably interview them regardless because that's the only person who applied. But let's say that at the same token, you've got 1,500 resumes that have been uh, submitted for consideration. They might say, hey, we only have time to interview 50, so let me take the top 50. That's where the ATS scores or that's where the initial scan uh, review by the, the, the first the first glance or the first pass through, that's where that becomes important. So the more you have buzzwords and keywords and the terms from the ad that are applicable to you and infused into your resume, that's the resume rewrite that we're talking about with this, right? So you can put it anywhere. You can put it in the professional summary. You can put it in the core companies competencies and achievements. You can put it in the employment history. You can even have it in the education. As long as it's somewhere in your resume, it's good. You don't need, I actually covered this with, um, with Curtis Tompkins. You don't want to use the same word over and over and over again. And there are tools that will help you with, you know, similes and, and, and words that you can use interchangeably. So you definitely want to have for example, strategic enterprise target account manager, let's see here. I'm just trying to look. So like managed print services, um, strategy most people have, prospecting, F2F, which stands for face-to-face -face meetings. So you can use the acronym F2F or you can use face-to-face. You might want to have like demonstrations, proposals. A lot of this stuff is already in uh, somebody who has my qualifications resume anyway. So, you know, you may not have to do as much rewriting depending on, you know, the terminology that they've done. But efficiencies, improving efficiencies is another one that you might want to add if, if it's me, right? I don't have improving efficiencies in my resume. But it is certainly something that I do all the time. I try to, to go into a client's uh, office or into their company, and I try to look at the workflow from start to finish on all their peripheral devices. And I try to help them, first of all, just redistribute uh, some of the 
the placement that they already have to use things that they already have better. That's increasing efficiencies. That's something I do already. So I could add that phrase into my, uh, either my, probably not into my professional summary. I probably would do that down here in my employment history somewhere. Like say, you know, one of the things that, that I did was helping people to increase efficiencies with the equipment they already have or add equipment that would help them increase efficiencies and gain, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. I could do something like that relatively easy. It would be true and I could expound upon that in the in the interview, which is something I do all the time. Okay. So hopefully you see when you have a job that you're qualified for, I am certainly qualified for this job if I was going to apply for it and, and submit my resume for consideration, if I would apply with just the resume I have now, my score would probably be in the high 80s, low 90s. But if I was to augment the resume and infuse some of the terms that they've used, whoever wrote this job description used it. The reason why I want to use their words is because they're likely the one who have set up the, the, the AI score, the calculator, right? And they're looking for these same terms. They've probably used the, the same person to do both, to write the posting and to set the calibration. So I want to use their phrases. But even, it, even if it is two different people that did it, the likelihood is they've set it up based on the job description. And so I have a better chance of earning this job. But now let's say I go to another company. This is Lexmark. Let's say I was going to apply for you know, maybe a company with graphics installations, not printer equipment. Well, I have experience in both. If you read my resume, um, you know, I, I've worked selling the equipment and that's primarily what I do now for California Surveying and Drafting Spy. When I was at Thomas Printworks, I primarily did graphics sales and managing the sales team, you know, for, for the graphics and we, we did sell equipment, but I, our shops were basically focused on um, end graphics, print, and installation. That's that's how we were making our money. So if I was applying for that job, I might need to come in and edit some of, uh, of these words. I might want to use more substrate terms like, um, you know, core plast or vinyl or, you know, window clings or vehicle wraps and things like that. I might want to infuse some of those things in so that I hit, hit on their key terms, what they're looking for, right? Sometimes people are all about, you know, the, the matrix or the metrics, if you will, of, of, you know, I want to see demonstrated growth, which I have in here, but maybe they use the word ROI and I don't have ROI in here, then I want to infuse that in, or maybe they're looking for, you know, uh, anyways, it could be, it could be a bunch of different things. You may or may not have it. And so if you don't, have, if you don't have it uh, and you're not eligible, you shouldn't put it in your resume. Again, please be clear. If, if you're looking at a job description and it says requirements and you don't have one, let's say I don't have demonstrated ability to do this. I do, but let's say I didn't. I should not add that to my resume. What I should do is address that in my cover letter and go, I know that it says required to do this, and I don't have that, but I feel that I can still do the job. And you might give them an antidote of something that gives you the confidence that you could do that to bridge the gap from what they require and to what you have to get them over that. Like, okay, well, I see that you don't have maybe your college degree, but maybe you're, you have you know, taken a lot of different credits in college and you have real world experience and maybe you've read a lot of books and stuff. And, and so with your real world experience, with your reading, uh, you know, your free reading, and then, you know, the college courses, coursework that you've completed, maybe that will be enough for them to go, you know what? Okay. Well, you say required, but we can see that, that you still would be good at this job. And, you know, where you go. So don't make stuff up. Don't fabricate things. Revise to fit what I like to use the word infuse to infuse the keywords that they're looking for by what they've stated in the job description. The other thing that you could do, and I didn't do it, but I could easily go to lexmark.com and do some 
reading, some research, and I would do that before the interview for sure, but I might want to take some of those key terms from the, their, their page if I see you know, some things that they use multiple times, but okay, well, this is a, Lex, a Lexmark idiom, if you will, and I'm gonna infuse that too. You know, that's, that's, bonus, that's bonus points a lot of times if you can do that, but anyways. My name is Ira Bowman. Uh, the website is projecthelpyougrow.com. If, um, if you're looking for a job and you, I have all kinds of helps on here. I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit, okay? So you can uh, register yourself as a candidate. You can search for jobs. The real value to me uh, comes from helping people with strategy. This video is going to live on this podcast page, but there's also blogs. So the blogs are um, articles that are written to help you with specific things, anything from time management, dealing with depression uh, because of a prolonged job search, how to get a visa. I've got advice on that, interview tips, um, how to be ATS compliant, how to build your resume, all kinds of different um, articles in there. So these podcasts and these blog articles are really designed to help you improve your odds of landing a job. The candidate profile helps you increase your exposure, your SEO results across the board, not just on my website, but on, on all platforms because of the active backlinks, um, help your name register higher, and then um, searching for jobs. There's millions of jobs. There's over a thousand jobs that are, are custom just to Project Help You Grow that have been listed on here, but there's uh, a partnership that I have with ZipRecruiter. So almost all jobs, if they're public, are on here too. There's a lot less competition on here, and I put jobs uh, or jobs get added anyways. On my site, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, there's more and more jobs that are listed. So if you come on here, um, it's, it's pretty easy to find a job. You simply would just go search job and then type in the industry keywords or the location or both. You know, so like if you wanted to do healthcare, for example, and you wanted to do California, you can start to do that and, and, it, and it starts to weed out stuff. So here's some of the, these jobs right here with the uh, logos are the ones that have been listed on the site. And then there's a bunch more. This is what I'm talking about with uh, the partnership with ZipRecruiter. I just have an endless supply and you can see the age of them. What I like about the jobs that have been listed specifically on my site is uh, they're, they're only 60 days old or less. They expire after 60 days so that you don't run into a lot of stale jobs. And employers can come back and, and um, edit the listing as uh, the job's been filled, which is nice too. In fact, one of the, the, job, one of the jobs right now, if I take this off, one of these um, highlighted jobs, that's the case. The, jo the job has actually been filled. Here it is right here. The social media manager position for United Health Group was filled. So, you know, if you click on it, it'll tell you. This position has been filled. This is where it tells you. But then if you come down here, you, there's no apply button. And it's been deactivated because it's been filled. So anyways, that's the website in a nutshell. Um, again, my name is Ira Bowman. If I can help you with anything from your resume or advice, uh, go ahead and reach out to me. My contact information is on, um, on the website here on the contact page. You can send me an email to info at projecthelpyourgrow.com and I'd be happy to respond and help you out. Hope you all are having a great day and best of luck with your job search if I can be of help. Don't hesitate to use the site. It is 100% free to use. Have a great day, everybody.